Welcome everybody, this is Wais back with another video on the channel. Today we are going to talk about Ionic. Ionic is a great framework to build a cross-platform mobile application for Android and iOS. You can take a look at my screen. I've got this uh, application running called Expense Logger. I built this application a while back. So if I take you to Google Play Store, you can look, you can search for Expense Logger and this is like a top fourth application that you will see with this name. What this application do, uh, if I open it up, you can basically log in expenses. There is no advertisement uh, that you will see on this application. It's completely free without any advertisement or without any uh, un not required permissions. Like it's not going to ask you to, hey, give me an access to your camera or a GPS or something like that. Okay. I removed all the expenses for today and I can tap on a plus button. Add an expense, add a description for it category tap on add and you will see that expense here there are a few other features like you can explore your expenses from the date previous dates it shouldn't be a, a date after today but there is so we're going to fix this i'm going to go to today you can filter by you know categories you can also there's a button to actually filter your expenses by amount so what are the max amount that you spend today that will be on the top and the bottom so you can do that as well so it's a very simple application i will create a separate video how you can build this from scratch by using ionic and uploading it to the play store and ios store wait for that video okay so the goal today is to upgrade this code to the latest version of ionic and angular okay so before we start i would like to mention a few things there are a lot of ways that you can convert this application to a latest version of Ionic and Angular, but the best way is to actually copy pasting your, you know, current components and services and, you know, modules and fix them one by one if required. This application is very simple, so we will probably just have to copy, you know, all the components and modules and that should all work. Sometimes the dependency that for example, I'm using this Lodash here. It might not be compatible with the latest version of Angular. So you gotta watch out. So one step at a time, don't copy the whole code to the next, you know, fresh project. So we're gonna create a new fresh Ionic project and start copy pasting uh, our custom code. And we're gonna make sure that every time we import any code, we make sure it's working. We're gonna try looking at uh, the guide that is provided by, um, let me just, Close the Firefox here. Oh yeah, one thing I would like to mention guys, that this video is pretty much uncut without editing. Whatever I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you guys pretty much uh, everything. Uh, the reason for that is you're gonna have to see me going over frustration probably, I don't know yet. So this is like a daily job of a software engineer fixing problems and getting frustrated sometimes because you gotta figure out what to do to fix the problem. Okay, so there should be an upgrade guide here. Um, so I'm just gonna search for update Angular 7 to 8 and there should be update.angular. So here you can see what is the guide for Angular. Uh, usually it is recommended that if you don't wanna hassle with a lot of dependency and stuff, you basically have to copy paste your code and then one by one fix the code, okay? If there's something deprecated, you go and fix it. Okay, so let's go back to our code and I would like to start by creating a fresh project and then, you know, start from there, okay? Uh, yeah, if you like this video, guys, uh, please give this video a like, uh, subscribe to the channel and also help me out, help this channel. I'm gonna be putting out a lot of more contents related to Python and Angular and Ionic. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching and let's get started. I've tried a few things already. I've removed this node module folders, used ionic repair command, removed platforms, but none of them worked. I could actually go and debug these problems one by one and actually make this code running. But what's the point? We're gonna go and upgrade this Angular version and ionic version to the latest version of uh, their current state. So first of all, let's open up CMD. I'm going to check for Ionic version CLI, so make sure you have the latest Ionic CLI. Let's go and create a new project. So I'll use uh, command prompt. I'm gonna try going to G drive if I know how to do it. 
because this thing is a little bit new to me cmd as you can see i can't go there so i'm just gonna go to folder right click and i'm gonna zoom that if i can go and open this powershell here maybe let's open up a linux shell that probably would help um uh just to share with you guys you can install a linux uh in windows Parallel, and you can use that linux command line now so i'm gonna use ionic version and that should show me the latest version of ionic yep that's correct so i'll use ionic start command and then it's asking me what is the project name so i'll use expense log enter and we got two options now we can use react or angular i'm going to use angular i'm going to use a blank and it says there is an application already there oh my god that's not what i want so i'm just quickly going to rename this um hopefully that would let me do it nope it's not i'm actually going to say no and it will not do anything so i'm just going to change the name while i create a new project so i'll just say expense logger angular as a framework and a blank template and then it's going to you know do what it's supposed to do to actually get the project up and running there you go we got this folder there as you can see the the crap cmd and powershell and also the bash sometimes gives you a lot of pain in windows so i'll just stick to you know linux all right so uh i'm gonna open up a pycharm and we are going to open up that folder and i use that new window so i could switch between the project and see when i have to copy paste the code okay so project is created i've got the project here so i can use this shortcut command Control alt home to go to the next project which is my old project here i'm going to open both projects side by side so let me just stop this okay so here we can check some dependency differences we got an angular 8 here angular 7 we got some changes in you know other angular packages like router 8 and router 7 uh, as far as ionic concerns i've got this ionic native slash core and i've got this ionic native slash core which has the same version 5 okay uh so now first of all we make sure that we install all the packages that are required so i'm just going to zoom uh into this uh both projects i can use the shortcut key to switch between the projects if i want to okay so let me go to the new project and i'm gonna start this so we'll use the command ionic so and we're going to start by copy pasting some code and make sure that all the dependencies that we are uh, we require to install we have installed them in a new project as well so first of all let's start this application and then i'm going to start copy pasting some of the code so here we'll start by looking at app component so in app component i've got pretty much you know nothing as a default application is there any custom code that i've written i do have some custom code here as well i will take a look at that later but first thing we need to you know start by importing some of the dependencies like services here okay uh, so let's go to that folder it's compiled successfully which is great i'm gonna open this up and localhost 8100 so it's an authentication flaw all right so what is the okay this 8100 All right so this is a ionic blank application guys which is running here and so what if we just put it on a side here and we start looking at our code like that let me just close this developer tools okay so now first of all let's go and copy all the services i'm going to go to source folder and I'm going to go to OEP folder and here I'm going to create a directory. I'll name it services. Okay, let's go to the next project. Let me just put it like that. And then we are going to make sure that we got the services. So I'm going to copy both of these files and I'm going to go here and then paste them there. So at this point, we got our services done. 
but if I open up a service I'm gonna make sure that I've got everything that is required so there is something Lodash so we need to install a Lodash okay now let me go to um, package.json file and I would like to copy some of the you know dependencies moment.js load.js and rxjs should be already there let's copy these two they look like we will need them in our code paste them here let's uh use this alt control f command and then we're gonna go to here and you know install the plugins uh so here patchum is telling me gonna run npn install so i can just click on that and it will install pretty much all the dependencies so what is the the main thing that we're doing here we're copying services and we're making sure all the dependencies are installed within these services so we need capacitor and we need models to for this service to you know work properly for that we are going to first go to the previous project i'm just going to copy this model folder and i'm just going to paste that here all right we got the models there and that error should go away we do have an error in the model now but that should be just a formatting okay uh let's close this file and now we're gonna fix this capacitor course i'm gonna go to the terminal i'm gonna use npn install dash dash save I've written this capacitor slash core. Uh, we will need a CLI as well. And let me just go back and verify that if this is here. So we got a capacitor core, we got a capacitor CLI as well. I'm not going to copy this bit here because this bit probably have a latest version of it. So I want to get the latest version of that. And if there is a problem in the code, we can go and fix that. All right, so capacitor CLI. That is required as well. I'm gonna verify that in our code. There you go. So now we got 1.5.0, and here we have uh, 1.0.0, and that's a beta version, which is not that you know, um, I mean, great. So it's probably expecting a lot of bugs in that version. So now we got a stable version 1.5.0, which is good. We got a CLI version 1.7.1.5.0. Let's take a look at the uh, expense service. The error is gone. So this error should be, you know, resolved now. Now we're gonna go to uh, expense.ts file. And here we can see we got some problems here. Uh, there's a zero which should not be here. This is the problem where we are seeing because Pycharm is really, really, uh, you know, problematic when you're not using proper, uh, you know TypeScript so here we got some issues I'm gonna change this to let and that should resolve the problem because war is not really used and then also I'm gonna format this here we need to have this triple and then what is the error here so it says forbidden bitwise a bitwise okay I'm just gonna say no bitwise for that. And here we got probably bitwise error. I'm just gonna leave that there. UUID, uh, prefer const. Yeah, we can use the const. And here it's gonna ask me to choose a lambda one. So I'm just gonna get rid of this and use this uh, arrow syntax. And that should resolve the problem. R got some issues. So R is never reused, use const. Okay, we're gonna use the const, that error is gone as well. The local variable is redundant, that's okay. Uh, yeah, the error seems to go away. If I get rid of this, you know, line, here we get another, so bitwise, but no bitwise. Uh, I don't know why it's giving an error, but I'm just gonna suppress this for now. Let's close this file. That's all good now, guys. And we got both services are running. And let's go back and see our code in a previous application. So we've got the models. Now we've got the services working. Here's the settings. 
uh, component, home component. Let's start by looking at our app routing. So here's a routing object. I'm just going to copy this bit and I'm going to go to uh, our code, go to app routing module. In here, we got this routes. We're going to paste that same code here. So the difference between Angular uh, 7 routing versus 8 is this way of importing your uh, lazy loaded module. So we use a, a load children function and we import that and then we you know this is basically a syntax so i'm actually already accessing this home module so this is all good so i don't need this okay so let's just not worry about that and next we're gonna take a look at app module and app module should not have a big difference there so let me just put that on the side I think I need a better resolution for the computer. Okay, so here we got status bar. I think not. I'm gonna have to go to app module. All right, so status bar, splash screen, that's all we need. Ionic writing strategy, yep. So app module looks okay as well to me. So next thing what we need is app component. Let's take a look at the app component for this one as well. Now here's a bit, here's, here's some sort of, you know, a difference code here. So if I just copy this bit and I like to paste that probably after the splash screen goes away and then there's no expense service. So you're going to have to manually import that. So I'll use private expense service all right that arrow should go away now okay now at this stage we should not have any problems with our app component so app component is just a routing component what is this it's changing this uh, single code that's all that's all good now um, now when i look at our home component this is just a module with its routing there. Now we don't really need to actually do anything here. We just got to copy paste this home. So here we have a home. I'm just going to get rid of it. Because I remember that I used a blank template and I'm just going to copy this bit and paste it here. Okay. And then also this add and analytics, I can just copy them and I can paste them here as well. All right, looks good. So let's just uh, rerun our server and let's see if, how many errors are we getting here. We're probably gonna get some errors like no settings. Yep, we're forgetting settings. So I'm just gonna copy that. And that should actually fix all my import from the old um, Angular or Ionic to the latest version. Okay, so that's all good. I'm gonna one more time do npm install in case um, we haven't installed all the dependencies. There's a lot of errors in, nope, no more errors, guys, which is good. So now the reason why I created this video is because how you can import one component at a time or one service at a time and fix and resolve the errors for those. Uh, and then in terms of, you know, writing your code with the latest API, it will tell you, it will tell you that this is deprecated or there is a problem. I'm going to use ionic serve command now to run this. And that should actually fix a lot of things for me. I think I used VS Code a while back ago when I was creating this application and that wasn't a good idea. I don't like VS Code anymore. Um, it is good as a free text editor, but not as good as Python or WebStorm. Okay, uh, let's try looking at our application now and I'm hoping that it should be running 100%. Okay, so the application is running. Uh, I can see I've got all the things running. A different color scheme here, guys. You can see uh, the keyboard should be all right as well. 
description and general okay add it and we can see that the uh, expense here i can delete that expense there as well and i just open up um, calendar so the calendar is the only thing it doesn't seem to work so in my home page this is the line that's not actually running so probably you have a look why it's not I'm gonna go to um, Ionic documentation here. I'm just gonna copy the latest version that I they have uh, available for calendar. So I'm just going to just say paste that here, format it. I'm gonna save the file and things look at our tend to save. Yep, please do save. There's a problem with the Linux because it doesn't really update that so automatically. So I'm going to have to start Ionic. So if that's the case, then I'm going to go back and use the CMD because uh, I've got to figure out how to fix this problem. I don't want to every time, you know. Okay, so now as you can see the things didn't update so let's just stop it. I'm gonna close the terminal. We're gonna go to settings terminal and here I'm going to simply change this to cmd.exe and now if I open terminal it should give me a command prompt so that's all good. Type INIX serve here that will use the port 8101 I probably configured that as well by default. Ionic application gets started at eight point uh, eight thousand. Okay, so we got no changes. So here's the code. Here's an ion item. That's the column. I'm gonna cut this and I'm gonna paste that after the column. Let's see. Do we have a changes? All right, we got the changes. That means the calendar does work. So what is the difference between this one? So we've got an ion day time. We got a display format. So we don't need a display format. And here's a value. Value can be the current date. And we've got the model there and ion change event. So if I just copy this bit and then paste that here, would that really work? Well, I need double codes here. So that function will be called filter dates. And we got an ng model here. So I'm gonna use ng model. And that would be selected date. Now there could be a problem here with ng model. So if I take a look at this home module i'm gonna make sure i've got a form module there so i could use you know that if i save this now let's see if our code still works with this click on that yep it does open doesn't open here all right so we know what's the problem here so i don't need a lines color so i can just simply get rid of it mm. Yep, get rid of it and we're just going to cut this bit, paste it here, format it, we don't need. And that would be icon. Let's see. Okay, it doesn't work on icon, but it does work here. So what I would like to do for this thing, the icon basically causing an issue for us. So we're not going to use an icon, but we're going to use this uh, model. Oh, sorry, a label. So we'll just change this to a label and let's just say date. Let's get rid of this cool sizes and you know, weird things. Ideally, it should not be like this. So now it's kind of working. Okay, so here we got date that we need to pick up. So I can use this uh, DD MM 
uh, actually we don't need to have this date format for now let's just save it without date format and see what's going on okay so that's all good we don't even need the value because the value would be coming from our ng model okay so as you can see we have successfully converted the replication from the old angular and ionic to latest version of it there were some problems uh that we can go and fix it so it says native calling splice skin that's not a problem that's a warning okay um so yeah i will create a tutorial how you can create the expense log replication including the authentication system with a django okay so if you uh, like this video that was like you know just a uncut video i've said a lot of things which i was not supposed to say not really polished editing so yeah thanks for watching if you did like it subscribe to the channel help me out by you know downloading to paypal if you can and yeah i talk to you guys in the next one